hand shaping pasta is an art form. Look at all these amazing shapes. There are so many possibilities. But first, I want you to see a master's hands forming and shaping pasta. Making fresh pasta is a very quick and simple process. All you need are four basic ingredients, flour, eggs, olive oil, and salt. And for the best results, these ingredients must be of the finest quality. Now I have Michael White here, who is pasta king. <laughs> and uh, he is going to show us how to make with uh, double zero flour, zero zero flour, and some very beautiful fresh eggs, the basic pasta. So you've created a little volcano. Volcano, a little well. <laughs> you know, this is obviously a process that uh, can be quite messy, but that's fun to get the kids oh, together. and Sure, and, everybody, uh, make, make a little volcano for everyone. Exactly. A and well, in other words. A little bit of salt, and uh, just maybe, I, I won't measure, but just a... Less than a tablespoon? Less than a tablespoon. Oh, yes. Exactly. And what does the oil do in well, the pasta you know for what? you? It gives a little shimmer to it, and it gives it a little elasticity. Sometimes the eggs are different sizes. These eggs happen to be, I would say, a medium egg. And so an, for 100 grams of flour, one egg. So it's kind of between a medium and a large. So My hens laid these just for you. Just for me. They well, did. listen, they're fantastic. <laughs> and, and there's so many different varieties. And you can see that they have a fantastic diet because they're nice and bright. It's, now, I'm talking to... A man who has how many restaurants serving uh, pasta? Eight. Eight. Eight restaurants serving pasta. And he could buy dry pasta oh. and serve that to everyone, but you do make almost every single pasta that you We make pasta every you, oh, pasta. You do. We, do, every we do not use any dry pasta whatsoever. Okay. That's, as they say in New York, that's my shtick, oh, making okay. fresh pasta. It is, so. and it is a delicious <laughs> shtick. <laughs> and so you can see how I'm bringing this together, and I've been doing it kind of really Gently. Gently, in the sense that we, we want to just see it come together and, and the crumb starts to... So, so the gluten is starting to relax. Just starting to relax, yeah. and you can see it becomes a, a messy process, but this all will, in about five to ten minutes, will completely dry up. Now, double zero flour is, is, is like a, a, a powdery talcum. Very, right. Exactly. Some people get confused about the fact that they'll say, oh, it's a low-protein flour. It has nothing to do with the protein content in the flour. It has to do with how fine it is. And it gives you that very supple quality, which is when you put a great sauce with it, it's quite uh, So while you special. need, should I make a, um, a food processor a food? pasta? I would love to see it happen. Okay, so sometimes when you're really rushed, you could do a food processor version of the same thing, and it's again, two cups of flour right into the processor, mm -hmm. and your pinch of salt, and you can actually break the eggs right down the neck of the food processor. So uh, we're going to put three eggs, the same as yours, mm -hmm. since this is your recipe. Yeah. <laughs> and start pulsing. Ah, so a little bit at a time. Yeah, and I don't overwork it because that would be the death knell of this pasta, <laughs> is to overwork it. And That's the same with pizza dough as well. Yeah, right? Uh, oh, wow. I'm learning all this. See, it looks good. Yep, and just sandy and, and we'll... Yep, and your little tiny bit of oil. Perfect. And that's it. So in the number of seconds that took... Um, Compared you know, to what I'm doing here. Yeah, but uh, see, now we start kneading that. It's sticking together nicely. It's perfect. Yeah. It's beautiful. And if it needs a little bit more flour, you can just add the bench flour, as you said. Dump it out. And it's nice, don't you think? 
I think it saves you five minutes. I think it would. And, and our it, busy it, lives, five minutes is it's like, huge. oh, it's like hours. And I have to tell you, it's not as messy as what I was doing. Huh? No, it's not. But don't overwork it. And I think that, that's really the key. And was that the metal blade or the plastic the metal, blade? The metal, metal. Okay, because I think really, uh, it's with the key with anything, whether we're working in by hand or a machine, it's, it's really less is more. Well, it's the same. I mean, pie crust, I, I timed us. It was about 13 minutes to make a pie crust by hand. By hand. And then it was about um, it was about 90 seconds sure. in the machine. Sure, absolutely. A little bit of ice water and it comes yeah. together. So this is very, very nice already. Okay, but see, this is going to take less time to me. It's starting this to is, smooth out It nicely. really is nice. My grandmother made all our own noodles. By hand. Yes, and, uh, with a great big dowel. Long before the food processor. Oh, right? yes. <laughs> so it's nice. It's perfect. Yeah. Okay, so. Shall we roll this? Yes, we should. Okay. So here we have your dough, which is so beautiful. And again, we have you can have this hand crankering roller. I'll do some on this, and okay. you, you can show you how piece. fast you do it on that. Eat. Do you use regular flour or do you use semolina flour? When we're rolling, especially with raviolis, we don't want to put uh, anything but the product that we're okay. using with with the uh, with the dough. So this is all double zero. So we will do the same. And I, do you just fold it over once or twice? Once or twice, just to give it a little um, rigidity, texture, and then... Uh... I've been making pasta for so long. I have pictures of me years and years ago in my kitchen uh -huh. using this hand cranker before that machine sure. came out. So okay. to what thinness do we want for um, your ravioli? I, I would say probably about six. Okay. Sometimes when you're, when you're rolling pasta, uh, the fact that it's, it, it has elasticity to it, it bounces back. And so you might do it two on the same number, yes. and you'll have a thinner. Sometimes people jump right to the lower number. Oh, no, I do it a couple times. You do it a couple yeah. times because it, it really helps it uh, not to... Um... See, it's coming out nicely. It's a beautiful color. Uh, do you dry your pasta at all? You know, if we're going to cut it, a long pasta, you want to let it air dry a bit to get uh, a dry surface so it cuts sharply. I'm not, not super dry though, because if you let it dry too much, it'll snap when you when you cut it. Just the outer surface has to be a bit uh, a bit dry. What you're really doing is pressing you're the dough, pressing exactly. rather than you know you're rolling and pressing at the same time mm -hmm. with a lot of pressure that you and stretching possibly I mean, do with your with your hands. And and the reason why you want it thin is because there's so many closures to it. Uh, a pasta that's that has uh, one length, but when you fold something together then you have two layers. Yes. And so therefore it has to be a very tender flour right. to, to compensate for that thickness. And so now we're going to take our beautiful sheets of translucent pasta and create ravioli. There are many different types of filled pasta. Agnoletti, tortelli, tortellini, capoletti. Endless. Uh, endless, endless. Can you name a few more? An Annolini, Tagliatelli, Capiletti, Capilacci. They're just, just <laughs> It sounds like infinite. a song. Infinite. Well, these pastas can be filled with ricotta cheese, with um, meat, meat mixtures, vegetables. Uh, but Michael has a favorite, uh, and I, I love this one, made with robiola cheese and parmesan. Exactly. And this is a cow and sheep milk cheese that comes from Italy. Uh, Piedmont, to be exact. It almost has the texture of uh, cream cheese. Or yeah, very tasty cheese, and uh, it's addictive. Uh, so six packages of robiola, robiola. Um, and some Parmesan, a half a cup of grated Parmigiana. And all of this parsley? Uh, just it, really up to, and, and this is what we would call the magro filling, uh, parsley. Oh, I like uh, all of it. Yeah, and well, uh, may I? Oh, add an egg, of and course. Add an egg, and the reason for adding an egg is the fact that when it cooks, it will solidify, and therefore the raviola, being a very high butterfat cheese, would just liquefy oh. inside the raviola. A little bit of salt and pepper, okay. absolutely fine. And Black we'll pepper, do a, okay? Sure, a little grating of nutmeg, oh, yeah. uh, which That's is funny. ubiquitous in, in uh, ravioli in the north of Italy. Mm. Uh, so this looks very good. Perfect color. Very nice. We're going to make the first uh, set of raviolis, we've taken this filling, we put it inside here, inside a bag. Oh, okay. You could, you could do dollops with a spoon or if you had a pastry bag. So you're spraying the pasta because it got a little dry? It got a little dry, okay. and this will help close it. Oh, good, yeah. Make it a little exactly. self-sticky. I, I feel sometimes people, they want to add egg wash or these, that's really not necessary. So you're gonna fold this over here? I'm gonna go forward where we could do this, and this is a quick way to do it at home. You could also cut a strip and lay it on top of that. It becomes a little bit more. And we'll, we'll go forward. 
And then we'll go in between these, okay? Oh, so you're making smallish. We're making small little ravioli. Oh, so beautiful. And this would be beautiful for a soup or any kind of summer type um, sauce. And then we could... Um, we and do you always use the um, zigzag? We, what we do is the, the, the front part of it should be zigzag. Oh, why? It really adds kind of that edge that I know for sure that it's closed because I don't have another piece of pasta over the top of it and I didn't go around in circles. And then we can do a couple of different things. Number one, you can make them like this. Oh, and, I and, love that. I have then, never done that. And then you can just do straight like this, okay? And so done. You done. Have ravioli. And you have little little ravioli. But the other thing we little could do pillows. here is if you were doing a little sauce, let's say this would be fabulous with butter and sage or a little bit of melted butter. Mm. But what we could do is we could fold this forward like that. And then this is called an agnolotti. And what this does, that's perfect. We have a little mm. pocket and the sauce uh -huh. goes inside here like this. So you just keep going like that and we can go forward. I'll show you another way of doing that as well. And this is a traditional. That's very nice, I like this. And, and this is a, what we call la labra, or the lip, and this picks up sauce. So I would like to make a raviolo for you, and raviolo, olo, mean large. And so what we'll do is we'll go just like this. Mm, that much. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an area. Can I put a yolk? Just or the yolk, egg? just the yolk. So just. we'll go inside. Ah, this is very interesting. It's a very pretty. Like a little spot on the bottom so it has something to rest on. Okay, perfect. Perfect. And we'll take a little bit of salt. A little bit of salt. Okay. A little bit of pepper. That's perfect, please. Okay, now we'll do the spray again. There, just there. That's perfect. Okay. And then we'll go over the top. And then what we do is we use this again, going like this. And it makes a nice round. Oh, look how beautiful. And then. This we'll is pasta making at its best. Like this. And this is a fabulous <gasps> brunch item. And you just go just like that. And this takes about four minutes in the water. And I would recommend sauteing a, some asparagus spears, maybe a little tomato concasse, melted butter, basil, and you just strew that over the top of it. And when you boil it and you crack it, and the liquid egg yolk comes out. Raviolo with <laughs> raviolo okay. and egg. How great. So now there are three other filled pastas that Michael White is going to show us how to form uh, using this beautiful, eggy pasta dough. Double zero. Double zero pasta dough. The reason why we're using double zero is the fact that, that we're doing many, many folds here. As you can see, we start with, uh, with the triangle, which we'll make now, but it has four thicknesses here, mm. so it has to be a very, very tender flour. Okay. So we'll start by making tortelli, which are about three inches wide. Now, do you ever use a ruler? This is uh, after 23 years of... Uh, <laughs> so but then, if you're a beginner, you could use a ruler as a, a we, straight edge, too, and you don't... Uh, it, it's, it's, it will save you time. We want to straighten these out. And so okay. what we'll do is we'll put down a nice portion of this. And for an entree, this is probably 10, 10 12 pieces, maybe more. And what we'll do is we'll give a quick spray. Pardon my reach. And then we're just going to go up. So spraying is so much faster than brushing. Than brushing. So it equal right at the right to the top. Right to the top, and then we'll get all that air out. So this is what we start with, okay? Okay. I'm going to show you two different types of tortelli. This is the more rustic way, where you just do a closure such as this, and then we lay them flat. These are a little bit bigger. Oh, so that's nice. Just flat. That's a very classic way. That's kind of a la nonna. And at the restaurant, we do one more little pinch. So what we do is the same as this, but then if I hold it like this, I'm going to pinch it like that. Oh, I like that. Bravissima. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Perfect. And then? And then I'm going to go right around my finger. Oh, yes, that's very nice. It's like and a so little miter of a pope. Exactly. And this is a... The this. pope's hat. The little cappe, torta, tortelli means cake. So this is like a little cake. Mm -hmm. Very nice. We're going to make these now. We're going to make what these are called capillacci. Capillacci, filled with meat. With meat. Uh, capillacci can also be filled with 
uh, zucca or squash, and we put a little bit of pepperoncino inside and uh, spiciness. But what we'll do is we'll make some squares. So any scraps like that, don't throw it away. Just chicken soup. Chicken soup, just throw chicken it soup. into chicken soup. And so what I would do is I would leave these out, let them air dry a bit, mm -hmm. and then just put them into a, a closed container and right into the, into the freezer and use them whenever you're ready for a quick pasta. Or, you know, adding a little bit of starch to a... Or if you're home alone. Oh, exactly. And want some pasta, you have it made, all the scraps, what a delicious thing. So what we've done is made squares again. What a simpler solution to the brushing. Okay, so this is what kind of meat? So this is uh, this is a filling that has a bit of parmigiano and uh, mortadella, all different types of uh, meats. And so what we'll do is we'll go forward, just like we did. We'll close it, just like that. Mm -hmm. So then what we do is we go under. So you make a little... Oh, a little indentation, like a pillow. Exactly. And then you walk it forward, like this, and like that. Like that. Mm -hmm. Righty, you know. Just Perfecto. like that. Then oh, we walk so it forward beautiful. and like this, and it's like a little cappello, a little hat. A baby pope hat. A baby pope hat. <laughs> okay. And now we're gonna make these little teensies. Oh, here we go. What so, are they called? These are called tortellini. Oh, okay. And these are the pasta namesake of uh, Bologna. Okay, so you want very thin pasta, very but thin. very small squares. Small squares. Are these filled with meat or cheese? We, we'll do cheese. Okay. We'll do cheese this time. But traditionally is a, is a mixture of mortadella and prosciutto, copious amounts of parmigiano and a little bit of nutmeg. But no zigzag edges no. on these. Mm, these are great. So we do the same as this. We can do a couple different ones. We'll do it. We'll show you the simple one exactly. Okay. The, the great part about this kind of pasta is is that it can be frozen. So after making this, what we do is uh, leave it uncovered, and we'll put it in the freezer on a small tray like this, freeze, and we can put it into storage these bags. Looks, these work so well. Perfect. Very nice. And next, we're going to show you how to make long strand pasta. There are many different types of long-stranded pastas. Spaghetti, fettuccine, pepperodelle, tagliatelle, or tagliolini. And when making long-stranded pastas, Michael likes to add a bit of semolina flour to give the dough a little bit more structure, a little bit more texture. And to help it be a little bit al dente. So fettuccine um, is the southern equivalent to tagliatelle, right? Exactly. Okay. And so you use a thin pasta. This is like number six. This is number six on the machine. And we fold towards you and away from you. Then we bring these two together, a little bit of semolina. And so we'll, we'll take the first one, clean it up a little bit, and then fettuccine. And it has to be a bit dry like this. See how nice and sharp it is and mm. clean? Fantastic. And then we'll bring this together. So this together is like, like grandma's noodles. The, these are. We yeah. can also make lasagna sheets. Oh, definitely. Oh, this so is pretty. Once you make one type of pasta, we can use it for many, many applications. Lasagna really is in its form right now. I like to blanch this just for maybe a minute or so, shock it in ice water, and then you can start to layer sheets of this pasta. Oh, so shock it in ice water, that'll keep it from sticking. Exactly. Probably. Or you could use a bechamel that was a little bit more liquidy, and then you wouldn't have to cook it in the moisture that cooks out of the bechamel. Would you trim the edges so that they're nice and straight, or doesn't that yeah, bother It really you? doesn't matter, because once it gets all put together, Okay. And we would go this way, this way, this way to cover one sheet. Mm -hmm. But the next sheet of pasta, I would go this way. Oh, smart. I go this way. So when you cut inside, it never, oh, it it never, never moves. Separates. It never separates. You create structure How both great ways. That is. We'll also do some fun shapes, such as pappardelle. Pappardelle should be zigzagged. And these are a great pasta for wild mushroom ragu. Wild or boar ragu. Wild boar ragu. Like, who's going to find a wild boar? <laughs> you don't have one up at the farm? No. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And uh, at any rate, we have these. So, pappardelle. And how long should pappardelle be? Well, there are two different types of pappardelle. These are really difficult to eat, although you will find them that long. What I like to do is what we call stracci. And stracci are about four inches long. And uh, what we do is off the machine, we do one, one cut down the middle, and then we do short ones like this. You get the same effect and mouthfeel, but you don't get the, the cumbersome, you know, sloppiness of the pasta. So really nice, a little bit shorter, such as this. And then it's really about, um, about utilizing all the now different- if you want very fine nose, you can also do that. Exactly. This, this is 
tagliolini, so we'll go to the machine. We could do the spaghetti. I need a rolling pin, and I'll tell you why. This is a little trick. The rolling pin on the front end of this, because it is thick. Oh, I see, makes it. Uh, it no. goes into the machine better. a bit better. And it goes in for you like that. Oh, look at that. There you are. We'll do that again. Yes, you can't. You have to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to hold it. Doesn't wait for anybody. We'll start on this side because it tends to walk to the other side. How gorgeous. Now, I sometimes just take it like that and hang it over a rack. Mm -hmm. You absolutely can do that yeah. and use it for another time. Yeah, I would hang it over a rack just to, just till cooking time. I'll, I'll use that. And that way it's not sticking together on the board. Right. This is going to be, these are tagliarin. So it will be a Piedmontese pasta. Oh, this is like, almost like a spaghetti. Spaghetti, exactly, but thin. And we'll change up now and we'll do some tagliatelle or fettuccine, if you will. So let's show the hand crank machine we'll, because this probably more people have this machine this, than any other. This machine has been around for years and is, is really part of the fabric of Italian cooking, uh, especially for fresh pasta making. A little bit of bench flour. And I really want you to feel this again because you see the, it has flour, but it, it has a little, just a little bit of sand, which it is. It does. So what percent, Semolina, to double zero? If you're going to do a cup of bench flour, I would say maybe a quarter cup Semolina and a three quarter cup uh, of regular okay. uh, double zero all purpose. Okay. okay. There. Perfect. And this is the way I've made pasta for many, many years. And, and th there's something about doing it by hand, though. Do you know the, the. It's fun. It's fun. But isn't that absolutely beautiful? That's uh, tagliatelle, right? Tagliatelle. Or if we're in the South, we'd call it fettuccine. But fettuccine, in reality, is just a bit wider than, than. And how do you make your fettuccine sauce? Well, are you talking about the, the, the classic? Alfredo. Oh, the Alfredo sauce. Do you uh, ever make that? Well, I, I tell you, in the restaurants, people do ask for it. It, it is. Uh, it is really what we would call in Bologna, tagliatelle alla panna, or with cream. Some people put a little bit of nutmeg in it, some people put, it, you know, maybe a bit of uh, garlic. I've seen all these types of things, but we try to t tend to stay away from those. But there is something soothing and comforting <laughs> on a cold night with Parmigiano oh, cheese. Let's make we'll, do, we'll make some of the, the capellini. With Parmigiano cheese, nutmeg, and cream, and butter as well. Mm. Um, there we go, here we are. And now these are capellini which really have to have a very uh, thin sauce, something that oh. doesn't weight the pasta down because it is very delicate. Oh, that is so beautiful. How about just... Or angel hair, capelli di... Uh, uh, cacio e pepe, exactly. Cacio a little bit of pepe. parmigiano or pecorino romano black pepper and a little bit of pasta water. And you can be off to the races with, uh, with a very, very quick it's pasta. Baby Jude's favorite pasta. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Baby Jude, yes. Baby Jude, yeah, she's loves, 14 months old and, and loves, loves cacio, cacio e pepe. pepe. That's her favorite. God bless her. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. So this is this looks like uh, Goldilocks's hair. Great. And if you're going to do stracciatella soup or something like that, oh, a yes. So Michael, uh, thank you very much for sharing in this lesson, and I hope you at home will try making your own pasta. You'll find it's well worth the effort, and it's a lot of fun. See you next time.